to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Oh. 
to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to meet with you, God. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. Face to face, I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to experience you. You are welcome here. Come flood this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Jehovah, we thank you. Your presence is a strong and it's a mighty wind, Jesus. 
In your presence, people are saved. In your presence, people are healed. People are delivered. There's no way we can be in your presence and not feel it, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for this gathering. We, Father, Lord, we pray that you have your agenda today. We ask for open hearts, Jesus, to feel your presence. We ask that as we bask into your presence, it shall be life-changing, oh God. Miracles and the signs of wonders that we've heard from the past, oh God. We shall experience it now in this very moment in Jesus' name. Yahweh, we thank you. We exalt your name. We give you glory. We give you honor. We say thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. It was meant to showcase earthly power on the side of a hill. It was wood and rope. It was hammer and nails. It was degradation, then death. And it never failed. It was chosen to stop the Christ, to erase the message he taught. It was the bitter end of Jesus. At least, that's what they thought. It was intended to defeat, to put down, to make the disciples give up, but instead it became the symbol of God's love. The icon of death became the icon of true living. What once marked the end is now the mark of the beginning, a mark of forgiveness, of new life, of new birth. What began at Calvary now covers the earth, over cities, over hospitals, through the streets, through homes. The picture of God's sacrifice is our picture of hope, the lasting image of our Savior and salvation's great cost. This is more than a symbol. This is the cross.
If you want to clap, you can clap. If you want to clap, you can clap. We're not clapping for the choir, by the way. We're clapping for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So if you want to appreciate God, you can do that. I think you can do that a little bit better. I think we can do this still a little bit better. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're just warming up. We're not, I can't feel it. See, if I can't feel it, I'm not sure if God can feel it. We're almost there, almost there, almost there, almost there. And, and, and one thing that would be cool, it would be if we can put a smile on our faces when we're clapping as well. That would make it much beautiful. So let's do that one more time. Let's give you a hand onto Jesus Christ. Yeah, with a smile as well. It's free, it's free, it's free. You can get, it's free. And before you sit down, I just want to, first of all, welcome everyone to God's presence tonight. Welcome to our Easter night of worship. On behalf of our pastors, PYO and PJ, we want to say happy Easter, first of all. Happy Good Friday. Welcome. Now that I've said welcome to you, I want you to turn to the person on your left and on your right, in front of you, behind you, and say a big welcome to them. It's good to have everyone in here, and tonight we want to ask that God's presence will be superly felt in this place, and imagine if we have some sort of manifestation of God's presence here on the day that he was crucified. I think that would be awesome, wouldn't it be? Good. So welcome again, welcome again, and I hope that everyone has had a good day. In a short while, we're going to go into... Um, a time of worship, but obviously, I, you know, it's a 
we try to explain what is going to happen to everyone so that we carry everyone along and then you don't get shocked or you can go, oh. So if you're coming to think that we're going to sing, 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 and sing, yes, we will sing, sing, and sing. But the, the, the main point for tonight is we want to be able to reflect on what today actually means. Because if we didn't have today, I don't think any of us will be here. If Christ would have just been born and that would have been the end, there would have been no payment or remission for our sins. So that's why we're grateful that we're here today. Once again, welcome everyone to the night of worship. And tonight, our theme is, you got to say it a little better than that. Our theme is, a little bit better than that. Our theme is fantastic. When you hear it, or when you hear that, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Worship. That's the Christian. Yes, worship. What's the first? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Sorry, crown. What else? Submission. What else? Did anybody think of casting crowns? So why didn't you say it? Uh, you said it. Oh, you didn't loud your voice. Loud your voice next time. So most people think about that song, right? Right? How many of us know the song? So cast and crown, what key is this? Ah, wait, wait, we are not on key. Wait, hold on. <laughs> cast and crowns. Sing it one more time. Casting crowns. It would be so nice if the young people can join us and sing as well. Just one more time. One more time. Lift and hands. Bow and hearts. It's all we call. Just one more time. I think when it hits you, I will know. One more time. Somebody has kind of got it. A few people are getting it. Huh? One more time. A few people have gotten it. Someone is getting it. Vow in hearts. It's all we come. For the last time, just the church. Casting crowns. I knew your voices will go higher there. In your name, Adonai, Adonai, you reign. You're officially taken into the choir today. So you are now Trinity Chapel Mass Choir. Yeah? Not new, we do know. <laughs> mass Choir. Thank you very much. How many people at some point started thinking about what they were saying at some point, yeah? And I think for some people, when they started thinking about it, they got up. Do you realize that those three words, casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts, are extreme forms of worship, yeah? Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts. Inasmuch as their words, sometimes even the physical expression of those words go a long way. Because there is no way I can sing, casting crowns, and my hands will be down. But the time that I lift my hands up, something changes. By the time I bow down, something changes. 2,000 years ago, there was a crown that was in place this time. What crown was that? Crown of thorns. Right? 
Before we go to the crown of thorns, I've got just a few more minutes. We're going to read a scripture. And, and you know us in New Eden, we like to be very dramatic with our stuff. So Revelation chapter 4. Let me get... standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven, with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby. A rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were twenty-four other thrones, and seated on them were twenty-four elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center, around the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second was like an ox, the third had a face like a man, the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Quick question. Whilst that was playing, how many people thought about heaven? How many people got scared? Yeah, I was scared. I mean, how many people were not scared? They were like, oh, it's nothing. So that's like a human, almost human um, interpretation of what it looks like. If heaven looks like that, I wouldn't want to miss it. I'd rather die and find out that there's no heaven and there's no hell than die and find out that there's heaven and then I miss it. Because we know what's on the other side. Now, 2,000 years ago, there was an exchange that was done. It was the crown of thorns. Hold on a second. And, you know, God, Christ came and that was put on his head. I'm not going on there first. What is a crown? We said we are casting our crowns tonight. A crown is an adornment that we use, that we wear on our heads. Some people, whether they're royalty, some people because of their status and stuff like that. It shows a symbol of power, symbol of authority, etc. and stuff like that. How many of us believe here that we are royal priests and kings? So everybody is wearing a crown. God has given you a crown. So whatever that crown is worth, whatever good symbolism that crown has, that's what we want to cast down today. However, a lot of us are still wearing the other crown, which is the crown of thorns. I need you to picture this. Remember that Christ said I was, he's the king of kings, the lord of lords and everything, and the Jews tried to make mockery of him by doing what? Putting the crown of thorns on his head. Not to say he's the king of kings, but to mock him that indeed are you the king of kings. Now obviously, picture this. The head, the mind is where the you know, all your faculties and once your brain is hindered and whatever, you can't really function properly, isn't it? Now, imagine you wearing a crown of thorns, which I can, I dare say, a lot of us, because that crown represented shame. It represented, represented our guilt 
and whatever it is that you want to say that is evil that Christ took on top of himself on that day. My question is today, to you is today, to you to my question to you today is this. I'm being mindful of time because I know that we want to sing and we want to worship God. What crown of thorns are you wearing? Because remember when it sits on your head, it presses your brains, it presses whatever, and stops you from taking the proper crown that God has given to you. I dare say that's some of the crowns that we're wearing are the things that are stopping us from actually even experiencing the crown that God has given to us. So what's on your crown? For some of us, it's guilt. For some of us, it's shame. For some of us, it's pride. For some of us, it's identity crisis. For some of us, it's our status. For some of us, it's rebellion. For some of us, it's the expectations that we have put on ourselves. For some of us, it's lukewarmness. For some of us, it can be um, ego. For some of us, it can be sin. For some of us, it's missed opportunities. For some of us, it's, oh, I thought I'd be married by now, but I'm not... And remember that whatever crown you're wearing, it becomes your identity. So a lot of people are wearing crowns that God has not really put on them. But it is stopping them from actually receiving what God has died to gain for them. So what crowns are you wearing tonight? I know we are saying we're just giving God the good crowns, but he wants to take the bad crown as well. So that it can be an exchange. So we're going to give you two, three minutes as we normally would do, to think about whatever crowns that you need to cast, both the good and the bad. And you know the good thing about the crown of thorns is this. You know we say that if only they knew, they wouldn't have crucified Christ. If only the Roman soldiers knew, they wouldn't have given him a crown of thorns. They probably should have given the crown of paper. Why? Because when God cursed the ground he, in Genesis, he mentioned the thorns. He said it would, it would prick you, it would, it, you will toil in, in hardship, and it would bring forth thorns. Remember that curse was what Christ put on his head. And he used that to actually win and, and fulfill the law. So tonight, whatever thorns you're carrying, yeah? I know we're waiting for the long season of, 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 um, of singing and stuff. So that our song will touch God's heart. It's time to cast those crowns down. It's not just the good ones, but the bad ones. I thought we were going to give us papers to write it down, but you can use your phone. In the next two minutes, right? In the next two minutes, think about it. What out of those negative crowns do you want to cast down? And then the good ones, because there's no crown that we have that is good that hasn't been given to us by God. So we are putting both down today so that God can indeed adorn our heads with what he has actually laid up for us. So I'm going to give you two minutes. Think about it. I'm going to give you two minutes to think about it. If you want to write it, write it down. But remember that when you cast it down, you're not picking it back up. You're not picking it back up. Because some of us, when we, when we say, God, take, by the time we're leaving, we've carried it again to come and drop it again next Sunday. So once you cast those crown of thorns down today, you're only picking up the crown of life which God has. So, one and a half more minutes, and I'm just going to leave you to just speak to God and cast those crowns down.
So this is going to be our prayer tonight. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. And I want to see you. Trinity Chapel, if that's your cry, sing it as a prayer. Open the
and worship if you have to sing in the spirit sing in the spirit if you have to sing your own understanding sing in your own understanding but right now I want us to lay it all before the Father because what, what we're here to do is just worship so we cast in crowns we're lifting hands and bowing hearts it's all we've come to do. We cast in crowns and we're lifting hands. Bowing hearts is all we've come. Let's just hear the church say, cast in crowns. Come on, lift your hands. And bowing heart. That's why we are here this evening. Cast your crown, lift in hand, bowing heart. It's all we've come. Come on, whatever that crown is, cast that crown. As you lift your hands and surrender, bowing hearts is all we've come to do. Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts is all we've come to do.
Meet me at the altar with my father. Hey. Meet me at the altar with my father. Meet me at the altar with my father. Meet me at the altar with my father. So leave me at the altar with my father. Leave me at the altar with my father.
lift up those hands all over this place and sing to worship you I live
Worship the name of the Lord, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Rose of Sharon. Come on, give him all the glory in this place. Exalt him for he is worthy. Glorify the name of the Lord. This is the moment where you have the exchange. Lay everything those crowns yes yes God come on as this song is playing I just want you to think about the lyrics
that's your prayer, lift up your hands and sing that to the Father.
worship you, our friend, our helper, our king, Jehovah Rapha, Yahweh, magnified. Come on, be 
worship her in the house this evening. And, and to lift up your voice and begin to give praise to this God. Exalt his name. Side. Worship him. Tell him what I he is to you. Give him praise. Lord give him thanks. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Feel his warm embrace. Feel his love around you. Embrace him tonight. Say thank you for, he, for, his, for, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for helping me. Thank you, Lord, for being the hand that has kept me. Thank you for the price that you paid. Thank you for dying the death you died that I may live the life that you should have lived. I will always worship you. May that a prayer tonight that I will always worship you, Lord. For as long as there is breath in me, I will worship you. No stone will take my place. I will worship you. I will worship you. I will glory in you, O Lord. We give you praise. We exalt your name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Isaiah chapter 53 says, Who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He had no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet did we esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. We are healed. We are healed. Above all powers, above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all we and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began. Kingdoms above all thrones, above all worlds, the world Of the earth. There's no way to measure what you were. There's no way to measure what you were. You were crucified. I'm 
With every weep, with every strike, with every slash, with every spit, with every piercing, he took it and he thought of you. He took it and he said, all for my children. He took it and he said, I am fulfilling the assignment of the one who sent me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We exalt your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped you. Thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated in God's wonderful presence. We'll be sharing communion tonight. So I'm going to be sharing very briefly. And then we will get into communion. Mark 15, 34 to 39 says, And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Which translated means, My God, my God, why did you forsake me? And in verse 38, scripture tells us, that having let, 37, having let out a loud voice, Jesus gave up the ghost. And in verse 38, it tells us, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The whole essence of today and every day in the life of a Christian is that on that day, what created a separation between us and God was pulled down. We no longer needed the blood of bulls and of, cold, of goats. I don't know about you, but the hardest book in the Bible for me to read is Leviticus. I just don't understand it. You say, you, pastor? Yes, me, pastor. Because it's full of fowl and chicken and goat and all kinds of animal loss boundary. And the peculiar detailing of what is required to atone for what level of calamity. You so much as look at someone and you think in your heart why is she so pretty? You have to go and kill one cow without blemish that has not ever been pregnant with a child. Jesus took all of that. I nailed it to the cross. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we come tonight to celebrate the king of glory himself. Yeah, it's okay to clap. It's okay to clap. It's okay to clap. We come as one of many hundreds of millions of people all over the world who are followers of Christ to say thank you, Lord. And that work that was done on Calvary continues to speak for you and I today. And it will speak to us, for us, tomorrow. For as long as Jesus doesn't come back, we have an assurance that everything will be all right. Say to your neighbor, everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. This is why scripture said, in 1 Corinthians 2, that in 6, it says, Are the kings of this world, 8 actually, are they known that in killing Jesus, they thought they were killing his message. They thought they were killing his ministry. They thought, kill the one that they thought is the Messiah. And that's why they said, where is your kingdom now? Help yourself, O king. Little did they realize that where his ministry was confined in geography, it would become limitless in boundary. Every time you declare yourself to be a believer, you affirm the work that Jesus did on the cross. Did you hear me? Every time 
we reach out to someone with a message of the truth that God loves them. Everybody likes love. For love is a wonderful word. Love is a very commercially attractive word. That's why the shops sell out in February, on February 14. Because everybody wants to be loved. On that cross, Jesus gave us the ultimate message of love. And so tonight, I want to encourage every one of us. Will we have expectations for as long as we are alive? Will we have desires? I hope everybody here does. Would we have hopes? I certainly would like to believe we all do. Would we have expectation? Every one of us must have expectation. Not just in this world. The um, person who was speaking earlier said he would rather die and find out there was no heaven. There's no such thing. Heaven is real. Hell is real. There is no debate. There is no discussion. It's not an intellectual thing. Behold the cross of Jesus. On that old rugged cross, Jesus established that he went into the hell and took the keys of death and of hell and he brought it out. And he said, I return it authority to you, children of God. Because we had ceded our authority to Satan. How do I know that heaven is real? I know because I see the wickedness of man in the world that we live in. What is most common in the news today? World War III, battles here and there. Every day we wake up, we're just starting to hear that it has broken out. True or true? Scripture tells us rumors of war, men being lovers of themselves, haters of good, resisting the truth, that every time you see evidence of what the Bible says, that is the confirmation that the journey doesn't end here. You will do well to keep your mind focused. Don't let the things you're chasing chase you out of the kingdom of God. You will make it in Jesus' name. Amen. You will arrive at the destination in Jesus' name. Amen. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews 9, 27 says, And just as each person is destined to die once, and after that comes judgment, so also Christ was offered once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. He will come again. Did you hear that? He will Come again. We, we don't only believe it. We tell our children it. They tell their children it. And we will keep repeating it until the ones who are standing when he comes finally say this is the fulfillment of the word. Say amen to that. Amen. He will come again. Not to deal with our sins. That era has come and gone. But to bring salvation to all who are eagerly awaiting him. I want to encourage us, brothers and sisters. I know many of us are already believers. But we must constantly remind ourselves what the true meaning of Christianity is. I was richly blessed by the demonstration of the casting of crowns. At the end of the day, we're nothing without God. But we're God, with God on our side, we're more than overcomers. We are more than conquerors. As I start to bring this to a close, because I want us to spend a few minutes praying. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16 tells us, since then we have a great high priest who has passed into the heaven. Jesus, the son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. Let us hold fast our confession. Let us hold fast our conviction. We live in an age and time when it is being tested on a daily basis. Where it is no longer cool to say that I am a Christ follower. You will stand and you will stand because you know whom you are believed. You are persuaded. Hallelujah. Romans 1, we shared yesterday, says, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore, we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But was in all points tempted just as we are, yet without sin. 
Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Friends, thank God for this Sunday after the Friday. Jesus is alive. Death has been conquered. We walk in victory. Just as death could not hold Jesus captive, you are free. You are not held captive. You are delivered. He said in Revelations 1 and 18, I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the key of Hades and of death. If thou shouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Tonight, we're going to lay down our crowns before him as we declare his majesty. We're going to lay down our crowns before him tonight in worship and adoration. We lay down our crowns before him. We take on his victory. It says, by his stripes, we are healed. I want you to have a specific expectation and bring it up to God right now. Would we all rise? It's a time to pray. It's a time to pray. Please don't speak in the language of the Spirit. It's not a time. You don't need the Holy Spirit to help you know what you need. I think that is, we can agree on that. You know what is paramount. On this day that our spirit man is so conscious of the resurrected Jesus, of a crucified Jesus, I want you to begin to decree and declare the things that are crucified in your life and the things that will rise up from the place of death. Begin to speak to them right now. Begin to speak to them right now. We have spent a whole week waiting on God, praying daily, and so I know that the deliverance is complete and it is here. You only need to reach out your hand and touch it. I begin to say, these things I lay down, these things I will not pick up again. This is my yesterday. They will not go into my tomorrow. I embrace the cross of Jesus. I receive the victory. I will no longer die. I will live because my Redeemer live it. I decree and I declare, my body hear the voice of the Lord. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. My wallet, my finances, hear the voice of the Lord. Jesus has taken the key of death and of hell. I will no longer be poor. I will abound. Ah, my womb, hear the voice of the Lord. I will be the mother of nations. Oh, yes, I have circled this mount long enough. It is time to step up higher. I am stepping up higher. I am stepping up higher. Is that somebody's prof profession? I am stepping up higher. Is that somebody's confession here? I am stepping up higher. I'm taking my destined place. I'm taking my destined place. Jesus has purchased a price for me. I am no longer held bound. I am no longer held down. I am no longer restrained. I am no longer repressed. I am no longer oppressed. I have been set free. And he whom the Lord sets free, he is free indeed. Say, I am free. 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 Freedom. 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 Oh, I don't see a free people here. A free people will be exalted. A free people will throw their arms up. A free people will shake their legs. A few, a, 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 a free people will be excited. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah, Shanta Karabasanta. Father, touch your children here tonight. Touch your children here tonight. Father, this is the culmination of all that you have done with us this week. I decree by your word, O oh God, that your children will come forth with a testimony. I decree by your word, O oh Lord, that they will experience your warm embrace where there has been weariness, I call strength. Where there has been difficulties, O oh God, I send angelic assistance right now in the name of Jesus. Where there have been blockages, I set free, I set loose. Where there have been inexplicable uh, 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 burdens and, uh, and pains and challenges, uh, the same way they came, they live tonight. Uh, because we are healed in the name of Jesus. You will soar on the wing of eagles. Hallelujah.
Can media prepare the old rugged cross? We're going to take that him in a few minutes before the communion. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. We embrace you here tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I have sensed in my spirit. As many know, I've been waiting all week long. And what a week it has been even for me. But I sensed in my spirit that somebody came here with a big burden in your heart. Seems like more of a health issue. Straight after communion, before I close, if you're that person, just come to the front. Don't worry about anybody looking at you. Today you're going to cling to the old rugged cross. And it will work for you. Amen. There's somebody who has traveled long. There's a matter that I've been contending with for a long time. It's not health. Don't worry about that. And God has begun to show a way out. That same grace is here tonight. You will receive your own way out. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There's somebody who's on the verge of giving up. Not so much as suicide. But, well, maybe it's not for me. It's a lie of the devil. His report says, you are whole, you are well, you are complete. I know, I know, I know that there are times when we get very close to the borderline. When it seems like, God, how will these things be? Like Mary, we are like, how? How shall these things be, Peter? Like Sarai, who was just in the other room and had a conversation that she would be pregnant. And she chuckled in her heart, not even outward aloud. That me, in this old age, with a man who's beyond his best by date, are these angels for real? Well, you know when God says it's his time. Even you will not be an obstacle to what God wants to do. I don't know who I'm ministering to tonight. I'm just flowing in the spirit. I'm just flowing in the spirit. Flow, river, flow. Who knows that song? Flow in the Let there be light. Let there be light. Let's take it. Take it. Shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Bless Spirit. Bless. Set heart on fire. River flow. flow. River flow. light of God be shed abroad upon all of us. I pray that the Shekinah glory of God will arise. He will fight for you. He will fight for me. The Egyptians you see today, you will see no more. You have entered into a new season. You have entered into a new day. You have received a fresh grace. But you know, as we took that song, I heard in my ears fight. There's some things you must labor for. There's some things you must fight for. There's some things you must break through. I didn't arrive here tonight on an easy platform. I had to fight to break through the enemy who wanted to keep me on the bed. I had to say the assignment on my head is bigger than the discomfort of ill health. And I rose up and as I rose up, the angels of God backed me. I don't know where it came from, but this I know. There are arrows everywhere. We must not be caught napping. Did you hear me? 
Tell your neighbor, pastor said you must not be caught napping. You must not be caught napping. If it makes you afraid, it's not a bad thing. Because when you're afraid, you will, set, you will put up your security alarm. You know what your security alarm is in the spirit? You will pray in the spirit. If you don't yet know how to speak in tongues, you better please wait behind after service on the right, on the left of my left of the altar. And the ministers will come and minister in tongues to you. You need that gift. One of these is our teacher on it in service. But in the interest of time, our time is well spent. Those um, people I called, once we take the wine, just come forward. I want to pray with you. There are a number of calls. No one's going to know who you are. But heaven knows. Can we get the communion elements? Hallelujah. Can we take the hymn? Can we take the hymn? Something happened. Thank you, Holy 
happen. Thank you, Lord. Now I know He touched me and made me whole. He touched me. He touched me. He touched me. Everybody have a um, communion element. There's some hands back there in the, in the corner. You can get to them. And back there as well. There's some hands back there. One more song. One more song. One more song. Happen now I know he touched me and made me all. Touch me me with your hand, Jesus. Touch me with your hands, Jesus. Touch me with your hand, Jesus. Please don't let me go. The same The same way I did. Touch me, Jesus. Jesus. We're about to break bread and share communion together. Now listen to me. Every single time that you break bread, it is an encounter. Many sometimes, I've been in ministry, I've been in church for over 30 years. It's not every time that I've had communion that there's been a cataclysmic change or an earthquake. But there's a time and a season when it is the seal that completes the ground for the work of God. Somebody with me. From Monday, we have been speaking to Matthew 28 about the earthquake, about the stone being rolled away, about how that created a wide gaping hole. But that was not the end of the story. The one who lay in the tomb had to receive life and the breath of God. And he had to rise up from that place. It takes an act of faith. And those around him with Lazarus had to remove the blindfold around his eyes. He was strapped, so they had to release him. You know what that means? Is that not the son of so-so and so? Do we not know your story and your family story? God is going to unwrap every cloak. Oh, Brachitaya, I don't want to preach tonight. God is going to unwrap every cloak that has surrounded you. You may have been in that report for a season. But tonight, you have come to the cross of Jesus. I stand on the authority of the word of God. You don't need to believe me. Just believe Jesus. And you will experience something that you have never felt before. And you will come back. And you will testify. So when you eat the bread tonight, 
it as one who knows and understands that this is to birth something. For some of you, for some of you it's a level of promotion. For some of you, it's the pull down of every delay. For some of you, it's a change in your medical report. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I have a burden in my heart for certain people. I'm going to couch it nicely. I think it is time for them to enter into family and motherhood and wife, be a wife. From this day, the scale will drop from the eyes of the one that God has set in place. They will find my daughters and I will join them. That is my own prayer tonight. And with that, for the same night, I received from, I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. The Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and he gave thanks. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the privilege to be able to decree a thing and it's established. Thank you for the privilege of association with your son by the spirit. Thank you for his body that was bruised, battered, wounded for us. Thank you tonight that Jesus left us, but he did not leave us. He gave us a promise that we should take, eat of his body, which is broken for him. And he says, do it as often as you will in remembrance of me. Eat unto life. Eat unto the perfection of all things concerning you. Shall we pray? Well, pray for your year. You've just finished the first quarter. There's three quarters to go. Some people have given up. I'm saying the year has left them behind. I say the year has just finished its dress rehearsal. And we're about to start the real business. We're going to the month of supplication. I want you to pray now. That Lord, perfect all that concerns me. Some of you are going to a very important quarter in your life. A quarter that, that lead, that's going to lead to significant change. I speak both prophetically and in the understanding and the physical. Pray about that new season you're entering to. Some of you need help. Help at work. Help at home. Help with your finances. Help with the job you are doing. Help with your body. Help with your bones. Help with your eyesight. Help with your blood vessels, your capillaries. Pray tonight. Pray tonight. He says, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. We are healed. Not we will be healed. Not we were healed. We, we, we are already healed. That is our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You may now drink the wine. Now begin to play the blood of Jesus on yourself. Play the blood of Jesus on yourself. Play the blood of Jesus on everything that pertains unto you. Play the blood of Jesus even on your life journey. Play the blood of Jesus even on your salvation. The enemy does not want you to make it. And he will try every funny style. Say, I will make it. My freedom has been purchased by Jesus. Nothing would steal it. Plead the blood of Jesus over your peace, over your joy. Plead the blood. Plead the blood. Plead the blood. Plead the blood. Say, blood, blood of Jesus, fight for me. Blood of Jesus, defend me. Blood of Jesus, be my shield. It is in the word of God. It is your right. It is your inheritance. It's your heritage. Plead the blood. I plead the blood over every route I will travel this year. 
I plead the blood over every aircraft I will travel in. I plead the blood over my car in every trip I make. I plead the blood over the brook, the, the place where I dwell. I plead the blood over this ministry called Trinity Chapel. I plead the blood over all our children, biological and spiritual. Father, nothing will take my peace. Nothing will take my joy. Nothing will take my salvation. Nothing will take my heritage. Nothing will take my inheritance. Nothing will spoil the work of my hands. In the name of Jesus. And a woman will bring forth with children. They will not have stillborn. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus sets me free. From sin and sorrow, the blood of Jesus set me free. The blood of Jesus, where, the blood where the people are called Jesus out. Set me I told some people to come out. I told some people to come out. Maybe I didn't. Do I need an interpreter or something or a translator? If you're one of them, come now. Come quickly, quickly. I don't have time. We've run out of time. If you're one of those that I called, I know what I heard. There is no ambiguity about it. So it's up to you whether you want to cling to the cross or you want to go home and try it on your own. Hey, hey, the blood of Jesus sets me free from sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus set me free. Yeah, the blood of Jesus. The blood.
you should be praying wherever the spirit of God is moving be praying be praying be praying to tap into it be praying for a visitation be praying for his touch you don't even have to be called out just ask for more of him if you have nothing else to pray say I ask for more of you in fill me in fill me The blood of Jesus, I plead. The blood, the blood of Jesus, I plead. The blood, the blood of Jesus, we plead. We plead the blood. The blood. Jesus, the blood that speaks of better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of Abel calls for vengeance. The blood of Jesus says it is finished. Declare it unto yourself tonight that it is finished with sorrow. It is finished with sickness. It is finished with lack. It is finished with discouragement. It is finished with trouble. And all of his attending neighbors in the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. You may be seated. Thank you for making the effort. So give yourself a round of applause. Thank you so very much. You all look beautiful. There are some people worshiping with us for the first time or coming back after a long time just to join us on this evening. If you fall into that category, can I see you wave at me, please? Anyone? Hallelujah. What a beautiful evening that you are joining us. And you look beautiful yourself. Thank you for coming. Any other person? Any other person? Yes, at the back. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I can see her. Mrs. P. Sandra, welcome back. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much. We celebrate you. Trinity Chapel, you are just sitting, clapping. Nobody is welcoming them. Nobody is excited to have these people. Nobody is celebrating them and you want them to come back. All right. We pray that the God of heaven will answer for you today. That which had been done of the cross of Calvary will be seen over your life forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We expect to see you again. Thank you for coming. Um, at this point, I'm here to take an offering. You know, the Lord Jesus today gave us the best. And I like this scripture that we have been given the tools 
to create wealth. And that wealth is not for us. You know, I keep saying it, that the wealth that is in your hands, according to Deuteronomy 8, 18, it says, you must remember the Lord your God, for he's the one who gives ability to get wealth. And it says, if you do this, it will confirm his covenant that he made by oath to your ancestors, even as he has to this day. So, there is a covenant of amazing wealth. You know, Christ, one of the things he took on the cross was our poverty, so that we may be rich. So, tonight, I want you to give a thanksgiving offering to this Lord that died for you and I, and has given us an assignment here on the face of the earth. He says, go and make disciples of all nations. In making that disciples, we need money. So please give generously this evening. The various means to give is on the screen. And because today is Good Friday, I want you to speak to your offering. Please don't just use your phone, give the offering and say, yes, I've given. I want you to speak to that offering. I want you to send it on a message to the number of souls that you want to see won into the kingdom of God. Because that is our assignment. So that money you are giving is for the extension of the kingdom of God. So pray for somebody that you think needs to be saved or that you know should be saved. Be it in your family, your colleague, you know, your neighbor, anyone that you feel that is yet to give their life to Christ as you give that offering, use it as a point of contact to them tonight and God Almighty will save them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to give you time to do that. Do we have any time? Okay. Over to you, New Eden. I'll be back. After generation, keep praising you, and no one tops you all. Then I asked the Lord, what name fit you? And he said, Yeah. Are we ready?
Says the Lord. 
worship you, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hey, my hiding place, my Savior, the Lord, you are. Thank you, Jesus. Jericho down. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Father and our God, we celebrate you. All that you are, we worship. We adore. We bow down, Lord God Almighty. We have come, Lord, to say thank you on that which you did 2,000 years ago. That is still working on the behalf of your children here on the side of eternity. Father, for everything, we are grateful. Jehovah, your children have given of their substance, of their worship, of their praise. Father, accept us and accept all that you have given to you tonight in the name of Jesus. Let it, Lord, be a remembrance, a memorial for us for the rest of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, the joy in our heart, Father, Lord, will never run dry. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will experience your peace. Father, Lord, we will experience your mercy. Father, Lord, God Almighty, the blood of Jesus, we speak liberation. We speak, Lord God Almighty, abundance. We speak healing into our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. For the hands that we are able to give, we thank you. Father, Lord, for the ones that were unable, we know that the heavens are open. Father, Lord, and you are making a way for them. That, Lord, this time next, next week, Father, they will come to testify. That that which they had prayed, that which they had believed, that which they had danced for, Father, you had done for us. That will be for each and everyone represented here, every member of our household, this nation that we dwell in, in the name of Jesus. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Father, we will not die suddenly. Father, our heads will not be bowed down in sorrow. We will not sorrow over our children. We will not sorrow over our spouses. We will not sorrow over our brothers and sisters. We will not sorrow over our parents. In the mighty name of Jesus, the banner of God will cover us. Father, when the world is shouting, there is a casting down. We decree and declare today that shall be a lifting for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, most high God, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Has somebody been blessed today? I've had an amazing time in God's presence. I've been so, so blessed. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Um, I want to thank uh, the people uh, worshiping with us for the very first time. Our guests in the house, thank you for worshiping with us today. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, we've got Mina, and we Yeboa. Thank you, thank you for coming. Please celebrate, celebrate, celebrate them. Hallelujah. We've got Celestina Ayeni. Thank you so much for coming. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we've got Teresa Ajao. Thank you so, so much for worshiping with us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've got a few announcements. Um, the clock springs forward on Sunday. <laughs> it's that time of the year. <laughs> so we gain, we gain one hour on Sunday. We lose one hour. It's, oh, sorry. We lose. Yes, we lose one hour. I eat as well. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Okay. Um, Sunday service. Uh, please don't um, forget to be in church on Sunday. <laughs> service is at 10 a.m. <laughs> and then um, we've got membership class uh, actually starting on the 13th of uh, April, uh, 2024. So if, you're, if you've just started attending Trinity Chapel, and you want to be a part of our membership class, we have uh, a new session commencing on the 13th of April, 2024. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's time to bring the service to a close. 
can we all rise up to our feet and um, just bless the name of the Lord for the experience you've had today. I've had a touch today. I've had such a, an awesome experience. Just pray that um, the Lord would help you to sustain this experience. You know, it's a one-on-one -on -one, you know, relationship that in your own personal work with God, this fire that you've caught today to be sustained in the name of Jesus. Come on, speak to God, speak to God. Thank God for, you know, it's the beginning of, 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 of a new phase. You know, Pastor mentioned that April was stepping into April. You know, you're stepping into a new phase, a new level in the name of Jesus. Abba Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks for what you have started to do in this house. We thank you for we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, can we join our hands together and uh, share the grace? Grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. See you on church on Sunday. <laughs> hashtag. 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 We do. Build to endure. Hashtag. Build to endure. Hashtag. Be watchful and prayerful. What's the third one? Hashtag take action. Beautiful last. <laughs>